All right, Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, we've covered many fancy trophy items that the rich are bidding up to prices that are truly insane. There's the burgeoning market for fancy trees. Apparently, the global elite have been engaged in wild bidding wars to buy particular tree trees that are deemed special, that they then have transported to their homes at great cost, all to serve as some sort of living status symbol. There's the record-breaking demand for art. Just this month, top auction houses were ready to auction off $1.6 billion in art, with expectations that some pieces would go for as much as 15 times their asking price. Art is not only a top market for the uber-rich, but also the criminally rich, although I repeat myself. There is also the pandemic-born yacht boom, leading to a multi-year wait for new boats and a massive spike in prices there as well. Now, these yachts are actually meant not so much as seagoing vessels, but as yet another way to ostentatiously display one's master of the universe status. According to yacht broker Trenton Carroll, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but 60% of the people, 70% of the people may never take their boats out. They'll have friends on the dock and they'll have little get togethers. Hey, come for wine, Fess Parker, or Opus One. And they'll watch the sunset go down and they'll sit around and brag about how great they are and how they're legends in their own mind. You know, I actually kind of appreciate the full contempt that this guy apparently has for his clientele. But the latest buying frenzy might be the dumbest and most disgusting yet. Big money investors are snapping up fake plots of digital land to the tune of millions of dollars. It is just as stupid, gross, and dystopian as it sounds. Here is the Wall Street Journal. Quote, The latest hot real estate market is not on the scenic coast or in balmy sunbelt cities. It's in the metaverse, where gamers are flocking and digital property sales are setting new records. Now, for the uninitiated, the metaverse is basically a virtual reality space that you can access by putting on a clunky headset, which will most likely leave you sweaty and nauseous after a few hours. Facebook is betting big on this digital alternate reality, even going so far as to rebrand Facebook as Meta. Here's a look at their rollout video. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually, it has things that are only possible virtually, and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. All right, perfect. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space? Uh huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's from a crater. I met in LA. Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course it's me. You know I had to be the robot, man. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I knew you were bluffing. Wow, we could have a meeting that's even more awkward than Zoom. That's amazing. <laughs> So investment firm Tokens.com, they just paid a record-breaking $2.5 million for real estate in fashion district of a metaverse called Decentral Lands. According to the company's CEO, quote, we can create something that's the equivalent of a Rodeo Drive or Fifth Avenue where the Gucci's and Adidas's will come. Because what this world really lacks is more luxury shopping experiences for the 1%. Weren't you just sitting there in your studio apartment with the heat turned down to save on gas prices, thinking that if the world just had another Rodeo Drive, then really everything would be perfect? Seriously wrap your head around the fact that millions of people are homeless or housing insecure, and permanent capital has millions to throw at real estate that is literally just pixels. Look, I'm not saying the metaverse won't catch on, earning these early investors millions and millions. Actually, I'm more disturbed by the possibility that it could. The term metaverse, it actually was coined in a 1992 sci-fi novel called Snow Crash, where people found refuge in a digital world because the real world was so hellish. Here's how CNBC described the plot of that novel. Set in the early 21st century, Snow Crash imagines a bleak future. The global economy has collapsed, and federal governments have lost most of their power to a handful of giant corporations. Sounds kind of familiar, guys. I guess the more billionaires ruin the world, the more billionaires stand to profit from our desire for escapism. But you know, it doesn't have to be dystopian. I can, in fact, imagine some version of the metaverse that would, in fact, enrich our societies. Remember what it felt like to believe in the early promise of social media, let's say before and during the Arab Spring? 
we were pitched on the idea that we could create these new connections, new communities, that we can engage with people anywhere who might share similar passions and interests, that we might flatten geography and overcome cultural differences in a way that heals our divides and soothes our sectarian souls. We might actually collectively achieve greater power to hold corrupt elites and institutions to account. But along the way, we somehow lost the path to that promised land and instead ended up in a more hellish place than where we started. Now it all feels inevitable, but it actually wasn't. The problem is that we let market logic in a few tech billionaires run what should have been a public commons. So instead of collective power, we ended up with mass exploitation. While our experience of these products is whatever message we're sending out or article we're sharing or video we're watching, the real point of the products is to profit by selling off every bit of data that they possibly can. And rather than operate as neutral spaces, they manipulate our emotions, they prey on our anxieties, they serve as content meant to enrage us and silo us into warring factions. Increasingly, they also actively suppress any outside voices in favor of the sort of legacy media that won't scare off the advertisers. Now, could the metaverse actually be good? Sure. Is it gonna be? Not a chance in hell. Instead, it's only gonna lead to a few tech billionaires having control over yet another part of our lives. It will lead to unimaginable levels of surveillance when our tech overlords are able to track everything from when we leave to go to the bathroom to when our eyes furtively glance at an ad for some new shit product that we absolutely do not need, but will be persuaded that we must have. And to the uber rich status contests escalating further into the digital world. It's trophy trees, mansions, priceless art and yachts used to host parties only with NFTs. <laughs> In other words, rather than being an escape from the shitty world we live in, it will mirror and accelerate all of the current shittiness. The other possibility is that it will stay just as lame as Zuckerberg's presentation and completely and utterly fail. That is the best result we can possibly hope for. You know, Sagar, there's all these questions, oh, what it'll be like, etc. Mm. Look, these things are never ultimately an escape. No. There were hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.